if then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing of the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited or grasped, is maybe a better translation, that Jesus is holding on for dear life, or this, this, um, this power, this, this being connected, being one with God. But instead he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more so in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Now, this... Um, this song that the Apostle Paul is quoting is a really ancient hymn. Um, it was, you know, so Paul's writing in the 50s. So that's only, you know, 20 years after the death of Jesus. So, so this, this Christ hymn, as it's oftentimes called, this, this hymn of um, emptying and then exaltation. You know, that Jesus uh, empties himself and then is exalted by God the Father. Uh, this is a hymn that is so early that Paul's able to quote it back to this Christian community, knowing that they know it, which I think is a pretty cool thing that, uh, you know, I, I try to bring up every time we, we read it because it's uh, just a really neat thing to get, get back into the earliest church and see those things that have been the most important to the faith from the start. So... I bring it up, and I've brought it up a couple times on this video, because I think our society needs um, a little dose of what uh, we Christians have to offer. This um, not considering our interests primarily, but instead considering as well the interests of our neighbor. That uh, we consider not only our own wealth, but the commonwealth, uh, to use a slightly different language. And particularly, uh, when it comes to the coronavirus, there's all kinds of ways in which if we're just looking out for ourselves, it makes it worse for everybody, including ourselves. Whereas when we look out for our neighbor, we end up also looking out for ourselves. So um, in this time when we've been dealing with the coronavirus for way too long, and they've in fact uh, coined a phrase, corona fatigue, that we're just tired. We've, we've been doing this for too darn long and we, we don't want to care anymore. We want to just uh, move on to the next thing. We can't do that because the virus doesn't care that we're, we're tired of dealing with the virus. It's just going to keep doing its thing. So, so I just want to remind everybody, um, just as I did at the start of um, the, the uh, coronavirus pandemic, that uh, we as Christians have something to offer the world, this, uh, this self-emptying this uh, considering others before ourselves. And, uh, you know, the, the example, just to give a concrete one, is masks, right? Uh, it's, we don't wear masks for ourselves, but instead for our neighbor, because, you know, it is effective a bit at keeping us from getting sick um, from other people, but it's incredibly effective, us not getting other people sick, because let's be frank, uh, with this virus, we have to remember everything we did for the last two weeks when we consider whether or not we may be uh, spreading the virus without realizing it. We may be asymptomatic, as uh, the scientists call it. So all that just to think about um, a concrete example of this Christian value of um, being other-centered, that uh, it's sort of like 
a mask, that it's not worn for ourselves, but instead worn for our neighbor. And in doing that, we're all having each other's back and um, keeping each other safe. And so too, um, in the Christian community, we consider one another's um, one another's lives as as primary and in doing that we are we are in fact uplifting the whole body of Christ which we are all included in so with that let us pray god of our weary years god of our silent tears you have brought us this far by faith lord we ask that you give us the will to work out your your goodwill for this world, Lord, that you would sustain us with your spirit, that we might serve you through our neighbor, that we might love one another as ourselves. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Lord, and our friend, whom we have sung about his emptying and exaltation since the beginning, we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless all.